Hello Farouk here at Direct Hub. I hope you're having a good week so far and you're getting in as much practice as you can. While at the same time you're trying to stick to your steady schedule and trying to build that consistency, the steady mode consistency where you're showing up each day and doing as many practice problems as you can. Remember consistency is not built in a day. So it's going to take time especially if you're just getting started. So start slow, don't overdo it, do a few practice problems and remember to always take your breaks. So don't underestimate the power of these breaks, especially for a big exam like the FE where you want to study, most of us study after work or after school or maybe both. So we know we have a lot going on. You have a lot on your plate. So you want to make sure you take your breaks. It can be small breaks. Just always take your breaks. So today I just have a quick reminder for you that the FE handbook has been updated. So on June 10, the NCEES updated the FE Handbook from 10-1 to FE Handbook 10-2. So let's make sure we're using the latest FE Handbook, FE Handbook 10-2. So this was updated on June 10, about five days ago at the time I'm recording this video. So we have to make sure we're using that handbook. And you can just download it off your dashboard, create an account, and you go under your dashboard in the NCEES website, view reference handbooks, and download the PDF Always use that PDF when you're practicing for FE Handbook 10-2. Just a quick note, FE Handbook 10-2 is applicable to all the upcoming FE exams. So if your FE exam is next week, make sure you're using this latest FE Handbook, FE Handbook 10-2. So just delete FE Handbook 10-1 and only use FE Handbook 10-2. Now let's look at some of the changes that were made from FE Handbook 10-1 to FE Handbook 10-2. And don't worry, these are very small or very minor. In fact, for the most sections, there were no changes from FE Handbook 10-1 to the latest FE Handbook 10-2. But I want to note for the civil engineering section, specifically transportation, there were some significant changes. And we'll discuss that as we talk about these changes as we proceed. So now I'm using the changes that NCS releases by a PDF. And I'll make sure to attach that in the link below. So see it in the link below. And we're just going to go over this real quick. These changes from 10-1 to 10-2. So we're looking at the changes only, not the actual FE handbook. So just know we're looking just at the changes that we have in the latest FE handbook. So let's look at this. So first of all, we're looking at page 3. They just added the conversion where we go from, in this case, we had the radian to degree already there but they added the one from revolution to RPM to the table. That's all they did. So when we're going from left to right to get revolution to the RPM, we can apply these conversions under page three, unit conversion factors table. And I'll also attach a video showing how to use this table that I released in the past. So now let's keep going. This one's for safety. So this one's more for environmental, FE other, and maybe for civil construction safety, maybe they do sometimes throw this stuff at us and also for the FE chemical as well. So they just updated this table on page 26 and added a note. So they updated the table and added this note down here. And that's all they did for this one, page 26. So now let's keep going to the next one. This one, nothing really changed for this. So page 69 for probability and statistics. So we're looking at the updated of least squares equation. So they didn't really change the equation from 10-1. So I'm not sure exactly what they're talking about, but they did like remove some definitions. So they removed the definition for SXY and SXX. Maybe they thought it was confusing students. Maybe they thought it wasn't a good definition, or maybe they expect us to know how to apply these equations, which is usually the case for the majority of equations. But for this stuff, we wanna use the calculator just to save time, especially when we're doing linear regression and finding that best fit line. But that's all they did for this. They just removed some definitions. Basically nothing really changed for this part, the least squares. And the next one is fluid mechanics. On page 191, they just updated the Y axis on the graph to go from 100 to 160. So in this case, well, they say Y axis Actually, it's going to be the x-axis, so that's just a typo there. But they updated the x-axis to go from the 100 to 160. So they added that 160 down there 
as highlighted in red as they denote on this graph. And this is important for the FE civil and FE mechanical, knowing how to read this graph and all of that stuff and any type of question they may ask for the centripetal pump characteristic curves. So now let's keep going. Next one is aerodynamics. This is for more FE mechanical. So we know air foil theory and they just updated this equation. Basically they removed the other equation that had the chord length, the C value, and they just kept this equation. That's all they did for that to find the AR value. So the aspect ratio. Now for civil engineering, this is when stuff is gonna be switched around. So make sure you're using this latest handbook. And the first thing is, which I like that they did this is move this table for shear when we're determining the spacing of the stirrups and also looking at the maximum per minute spacing and the required spacing, they put that under shear. It makes sense. Before it was confusing, we had to scroll too much or click too many pages to, just to get this. So I like that they did this. It'll save us time on the actual FE as we're doing practice questions and on the actual exam. So they moved this table directly under beam shear in the latest FE handbook. Then this is the biggest thing I would say for Sybil, this part. So they added these equations for the new, basically it's the HCM menu, the highway capacity menu, the 2016, the latest version. We know we determine the speed using these equations and we determine the speed. It might be the free flow speed. If this is true, or it might be the speed might be by this equation. This is true. So that is going to be what's updated. They removed the old one where you, we saw the break point and we saw like a range for the speed to determine that. They removed that and updated it for the new unified speed flow theory based on the highway capacity manual. So make sure you know this section. This is what they did. And they did that for the basic freeway segments. And this is essentially all of this. You can find a lot of different parameters. But the biggest thing is finding that speed. And remember, just I don't want to teach stuff here. Just know what we do to get that level of service is essentially at the beginning, we find number one, find the free flow speed. Then number two, find that demand flow rate at base conditions. Number three is we find the speed, the operating speed or the mean speed, which is going to be our S value. That's going to be the third step is finding the S value. Then with the S value, we can find the density. So the density is just the demand flow rate divided by the speed. Then with the density, we can find the level of service. So it's all interconnected. But the biggest thing is finding that speed, which is the S value, the operating speed. So that's a big change for transportation. The rest stayed the same. Basically, they rearrange stuff to make sure to include this table. But then the rest are equations we're used to from the old FE handbook 10-1. Now under earthwork formulas, basically this is more for surveying, for civil engineering. What they did is insert a mass hall diagram. So now they're expecting us to know what a mass hall diagram is, what it means, and how we can read it. Maybe they'll ask us to click on something. Maybe they'll ask us to find a quantity. Usually we're looking, while well, we're looking at the net quality of volume of excavation, and that is basically what we denote on that mass hall diagram. So we have to understand. So make sure you review this, know about mass hall diagrams. And what they did is add this figure. So they give us the this line, the dashed line is the existing grade or the existing ground. Then the proposed grade, which is like the flat horizontal line, is going to be the this one, the dark line. So we have the beginning of, of the project at that station and we end here at this station. So this is looking at the profile view, right? When you have the existing ground and the proposed grade, that's the profile. For a profile, we can get something called the mass hall diagram. Then we get that mass hall diagram. They denote it here. They denote the balance point. Maybe we'll get an easy conceptual question. Click on the graph, find the balance point. Just know it's just the point where in it's zero. Basically, this is zero. This will be positive. This will be negative. And it defines also the mass hall diagram. It will be the cumulative or the net total of excavation and embankment at a given station. So 
it's important because it's excavation. Think of that as the cut and embankment as the fill. So it's the net volume of both of those. So we take the cut and the fill, we combine them together, then we get a net volume. It's a net volume for the mass hall value, the value we get in that mass hall diagram. So make sure you know that. And also they talk about the word shrinkage. So now they expect us to know what we, how to incorporate the shrinkage factor or the shrinkage percentage when we're doing our cut and fill analysis for earthwork. So make sure you know that as well about shrinkage and how that affects our cut and fill volumes as well. So that would be the biggest things I would say in this FE handbook, these changes for the civil section, for the civil engineering section. Other than that, we can proceed and look at the electrical. There isn't really much going on the page 366. They reworded the word AC machines. Okay. Then they put AC machines section. Then they put this equation that looks quite simple to use, but I'm not sure I'm not doing electrical here, but that's that. Then you have the mechanical engineering. So they updated the ASME standard. And then this is under the geometric dimension and tolerances. And they just put a definition for feature control frame and they updated that definition. So they expect us to know about feature control frames, what they mean and what the certain symbols mean. And I think just the basics, especially for something like the FE about feature control frames, make sure you know that and review that as well. And lastly, they removed actually two tolerance types. So under the tolerance types, they removed the concentricity and they moved the removed the symmetry tolerance types. So they only for location, they removed those under location, those specific ones, which is nice. And they only kept the position. And that is all the changes we have. And the biggest ones, once again, is for the civil engineering section. So that's all I have for today. It's just a reminder that you want to make sure you're using the latest FE handbook. So I wish you the best with your studies and I'll see you in the next video.